Hi, it's Friday and you're watching the week ahead of London Capital Group. Now, investors are preparing for their positions for the Greek referendum over the weekend. And joining me now to discuss the week ahead is market analyst Ipek Ozkardeshka. Ipek, thanks for joining me. Now, first of all, let's look at the potential scenarios of what a yes or, or no vote will mean. What will it mean for the markets? Well, actually, uh, Greeks are asked to decide whether they want to go ahead with, a th with the third bailout. So if they want the EU aid, that means that it's going to be more austerity measures, some, uh, some restrictions, more constraints uh, in their daily lives. So they are, have been asked whether they want it or not. So a no vote we will mean that they do not want uh, the European Union aid and they will uh, be finding some other solutions, with, uh, whereas a yes vote is going to be, okay, let's go ahead uh, with the European aid and just, you know, seal a deal with the, with the third bailout and see how it goes. So this is just the, uh, this is just the general framework. Obviously, a no vote will not mean uh, a automatic euro exit, but it's going to be uh, complicating the situation even more because uh, of the fact that the ECB will not be able to fund the Greek banks, and that's just going to push the uh, pu that might push the country toward a uh, euro exit. So that's going to be the main issue. And how should investors be positioning themselves and preparing in terms of their positions uh, ahead of the referendum, or how have they? Should I say as well? So right now, what we see in the market is that investors are just curbing their positions or exposing to Euro, Euro denominated assets and Greece because we do not know what's going to happen on Monday open. That, mean, that, that means that we, we you might have two side volatilities. If it's a no vote, we can have a gap open like we had on Monday or we can have a higher gap open. So that's just the, uh, the, the volatility will be high. The visibility is very low. That means that for, for, for traders who do not want to take the risk, it's a good idea to, to just go flat into, uh, into, into Monday or into the weekend. That means that if you want to trade, it's more. Uh, there are alternatives, not going straight forward into euro dollar, but maybe try euro yen or euro sterling, which might have less volatilities than euro dollar itself. So that's uh, how we were going to see the week ending, probably with flat positions or traders just getting out, maybe to Asia, maybe to South, uh, South America, but not staying in the eurozone and with exposure to European equities or euro, okay. per se. Well, we've got a, moving on to, to Tuesday, we've got a RBA rate decision coming up. Now, in the last year, we've seen around a 20% slide in the, the Aussie dollar against, against the US dollar, which is obviously making the RBA quite happy. But at the same time, I mean, the RBA left rates on hold in the June meeting, but central uh, bank governor Glenn Stevens, I mean, he did leave the door open for the possibility of further rate hikes. He said about leaving policy very accommodative, um, so to speak. He's been citing the weaker economy. He's also concerned about house prices. Are risks skewed to further easing? And if so, what about timing? Well, actually, we are looking for it's, it's possible to have a further easing from the RBA, but we don't think it's going to be this week. Mm -hmm. uh, simply because uh, right now, with the Fed uh, expectations getting a little bit, with the Fed expectations getting a bit towards 2016% for the first rate hike, uh, the Australian dollar is actually not performing uh, against the RBA's bill. So uh, right now we just hit the six year low today, mm -hmm. 75, 12 levels uh, when I last saw the, uh, saw the graph. So uh, at this point, we don't think that the RBA needs to cut further. It's a better idea to keep this, keep this margin in order to use it if uh, in case of need, in case of uh, a further delay in Fed. So this is where we are right now. And uh, on the other hand, we know that uh, the, the trend, the new trend is towards a loser policy. So we thought that uh, the commodity currency, currency, currencies, for, for example, Canadian dollar or Kiwi, were ready for, uh, for policy normalization. It has not been the case. Uh, and now we're just like stepping back to loser monetary policy. So that means that there is the, the door remains open for more uh, more cuts on the on the Australian side. However, it's not going to be this week. The market does not give the possibility. If it happens, that's going to be a massive surprise, and that means that the Aussie dollar can rapidly slip below 75 cents level, and we will be targeting 70 cents level at next step. Okay. 
Moving on to the FOMC, we've got June meeting minutes that's coming out on Wednesday. I mean, there's been quite a shift in terms of the percentage and of chances of the timing of the first rate hike. We've had, have had all sorts, and whether it be September, December, moving into 2016, the NFP did disappoint this week. That was one of the major um, data coming out. As the markets look ahead to next week, do you think we'll get much of a firm signal from the Fed in terms of, like, the actual timing? Is it, is it too far out for, for the Fed to give such a, a firm signal? Well, actually, each piece of news just, you know, swings the market in one side or the other. So uh, we started this week with more than 50% probability of seeing a rate hike before the end of 2015. After the NFPs, we are now below 50%. So each piece of information will uh, add more volatility and even more moving to September because we are expecting or some expect uh, the, uh, the Fed to proceed with the first rate hike as soon as September. Uh, in, in, in this scenario, I don't think that uh, the Fed ministry is going to impact uh, the market expectations massively, but we still uh, we, we, are, we will still be looking at whether there is a hint or a signal that a September hike might happen uh, on the sovereign markets. As said, the, the market does not give more than 50% chance for a December rate hike, so it seems that it is moving towards 2016. But once again, it's just going to be, uh, we do not think that Fed is just going to give any clarity yeah. on no. this for the, and we, there, there will probably, we will, we are not expecting to see any more clarity from the Fed minutes next week. Are we expecting much movement from the, from the US dollar on the back of this release then or not really? Well actually we have got the, uh, the, uh, the, the move yesterday so at this moment we see that the, um, that the US dollar appetite has been curbed after the NFP numbers so uh, it will most probably, in case of a surprise, obviously, but as we do not expect any more clarity or any more visibility on what's, what might happen, the US dollar should be uh, trading into the, in, into the, uh, into the broad uh, trend, so which means that higher US dollar for the year end. However, right now we might see some correction on the downside. Okay. Seems like it's a week of uh, rate decisions. We've also got the Bank of England uh, rate decision coming up on Thursday. Is this a bit of a non-event? It, will, it is going to be a non-event, however, the BOE minutes that are due on 22nd of July will be important because we expect at least two out of nine MPC members to, to, to jump into the hawkish camp now that the uh, macroeconomic data from the UK is being quite strong. But once again, that's just that, that means that we are seeing right now a convergence between the Fed and the BOE, even though we will not, we are not expecting to see any rate hike before the year end. This convergence should give some uh, give some support to cable to, to to sterling against the U.S. dollar, and we see 200-day moving averages at about 154.50 levels as a good base. Okay, I want to talk about China just for a minute. I mean. The People's Bank of China, they've struggled to contain the, the equity market sell-off via their easing measures. I know obviously now they're investigating stock market manipulation as well. With growth data out of China still quite soft and obviously mounting uncertainty over Greece going on in the markets, it seems both are adding to the global growth worries and also they're putting pressure on, on commodities as well. Is there reason to be concerned about the kind of the state of the Chinese economy right now? Well, obviously yes, because there is a probability that the China, uh, that China never uh, achieves the seven percent uh, growth target by the end of this year. So this is a uh, this is a concern for not only China but the whole Asian economy and the world economy because it's just one of the leading uh, global economies. So obviously it is a problem. So uh, the. The, the PBOC just injected 50 billion yuan uh, worth of liquidity this week, cut the benchmark interest rate. However, it did not uh, refrain the, uh, the, the Chinese stocks from being sold. So we have seen great volatilities okay. over this week. There will be more easing from the Chinese side, but injecting money into the Chinese closed system is not a solution because it's a high leverage market. It's just going to increase volatilities. China needs to open its doors globally or just free its markets in order to, uh, in order to make this growth happen and not only injecting money. Injecting money is just a temporary solution. And we see that right now the market is not reacting in a way it should react. It's not uh, encouraging the growth. It's just encouraging volatilities in the Chinese market. So I want to wrap up here just with the, uh, the biggest trade opportunity you see going into next week. What, what do you think, Ipek? Well, obviously, euro will be in focus, but euro trading euro dollar is a very direct exposure. So to avoid the euro dollar trades, what might be interesting, we see opportunities in euro yen or euro 
uh, your sterling. So if we see a no vote, there will be a, a gap open on the downside probably and push you again towards the daily Ichimoku cover, which is 131 to 133.85 uh, levels will be important and a no vote could push the euro sterling below the 70 uh, 70 pence level which is which might afterwards become a, a mid-term mid to long-term uh, resistance on euro sterling so uh, in case of a yes vote which is 75 to 80 percent probability according to market expectations then we might see a relief rally in the market so in that case we will be looking uh, at 140 uh, 140 141 mark in euro yen and we can just uh, target 172 172.50 zone for the euro sterling. Okay brilliant interesting week coming up thank you very much Ipeg. That's all for now with London Capital Group's week ahead goodbye for now.